Now the Lakers are not the only team in the NBA making noise and people have people panicking. Um, people, <laughs> some people are already panicking about the Miami Heat um, losing two games in a row and being also kind of flat when they play. Um, everybody was excited for that Sunday preview of the finals, which everybody has between OKC and the Heat. And it looked like the Heat didn't really come out to play. And then again, they lost again back to back to Indiana. So what do you think about Miami? Do you think it's time to panic or something to worry about? Or it's just uh, just another like eyes of March type of thing where they don't really care? <laughs> well, I, I think Miami's going through some tough games right now. And the teams have been exploiting their weaknesses. But I think their talent gives them the ability to, you know, flip the switch, flip the switch yeah. late in, in the playoffs. And I think they, they, they still favorites to win the East, in my opinion, and have the talent necessary to take them to the finals. But I know you disagree, guys. No, I don't disagree. I think is this is this another game with Mars? I don't, it's not the big deal. I think they're just not interested in the game. I think they, Wade and LeBron were interested in it. I think it happens to everybody in the league. I mean, it's hard to be in, focused and zone in in every single game you got to play, especially in this condensed season. You're bound to have games where you just don't feel it, you just don't have it, and, that, and that's just what happens. Uh, but... What is concerning is that they are getting out rebound by the teams they're playing. And that is their major their major weakness is, is the inside the interior and rebounding. I mean Joel Anthony's getting like two, four, three, two rebounds in the last games he played. So you can't have that from your center if he's gonna average like twenty eight minutes a game. You gotta average more than those those type of numbers rebounding. Especially because he's not gonna score, so you gotta get the ball. Well, I mean the, the and the Heat have made moves to sort of address that. Earlier this week, they signed Ronnie Terry from the Lakers. <laughs> Kobe's best friend. Kobe's best friend. Um, not really. But, uh, <laughs> you know, he's a solid addition, I think, to the team as far as rebounding is concerned, defense is concerned. Pretty much a, a kind of a better version of Joel Anthony. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you know, I think they're cognizant of their weaknesses yeah. inside. I don't think teams can consistent in the Eastern Conference, at least, can consistently exploit that. Well, I don't know. Ch- so. Chicago's the number one rebounding team in the league, and that's, I guess, the only threat they have. But again, it's the Miami Heat. They have two of the top five players in the league, arguably with, with Wade and LeBron. And they're so athletic defensively, and, when, and if they want to, they can pretty much shut down any team defensively. I mean... It's, well, and then I, that's an interesting thing to recognize, because the Bulls have their trouble scoring the ball, especially when the ball gets stuck with, in Derrick Rose's hands, yeah. right? So... And then, as far as uh, the a Bulls Heat matchup going forward, um, the Bulls have Carlos Boozer down low, and he's not necessarily somebody you want to depend on no, over a seven game know. series offensively. They do have other nice pieces, though. Tyrus Thomas, I think, is a legitimate uh, backup power forward, and one day, I Who? think. Ty- uh, excuse me. Yeah, I was that. He's Tyrus on, Thomas. I was back in the day with Pitt uh, Henry and Ben Gordon. What's his, what's his name? Who? Which one are you talking about? Uh, uh, Gip- uh, Tyrese Gibson. Todd Gibson. Gibson. Uh, Taj Gibson. That's going to get edited out. But, uh, <laughs> that was not. That's... We don't edit any of that on the show. <laughs> Taj Gibson, I think, is a, is a decent uh, backup uh, with the potential to do some, some damage to, to, to the Miami Heat. So, you know, I'd, I'd look for him to really yeah. be a potential game changer yeah. in the but series. Don't worry about Miami. They're going to be fine. Uh, nothing to worry about. You got LeBron and Wade. There's nothing to really <laughs> worry about, especially you lose to OKC. Or my, or Indiana, it's not that big of a deal. And OKC is a tough matchup. I yeah, mean, they're, they're the best team in the Western Conference. And right? everybody loses to teams is not something uncommon. I mean, the Lakers lost to the Wizards and Detroit. San Antonio lost to Minnesota. So everybody loses. It's not that big of a deal, you know. It's just this, these weren't interested in the game. That's all. They took a day off mentally. Mm-hmm. They checked out. It happens, and trust me, as Laker fans, we're used to. <laughs> People the coaching team, the team, taking many many yeah. days off. So too many now. Yeah. I don't know, but another team that's interesting to see now it's um it's a team fighting for for the eighth seed um in New York the New York Knicks yes they're Ever still alive heard somehow heard of them heard of them somehow I mean with all the drama with Lynn Carmelo can't fit in the um, the re- the resigning of or Mike D'Antoni resigning and then you have now Woodson taking over the coaching job and now we hear that uh, Mari is out indefinitely with the bulging disc so. Do you see this Knicks team making the playoffs without Amari in the lineup? No. No? I, I don't. I wow. think there have been way too many roadblocks on this Knicks season to date, and I think this one finally is the one that knocks the Knicks down. 
You had the D'Antoni fire. You had the emergency. He didn't get fired. He resigned. He didn't get Res- fired. Oh, fair he was going to get fired at the end of the season, but he resigned. He got fired. <laughs> um, the, you had the Jerry Millen uh, phenomenon. phenomenon, and then catastrophe. <laughs> um, you had Carmelo's bad offensive play gone to worse offensive play to now fairly decent offensive play. Um, yeah, this is, these are a lot of challenges that this team has had to address, and now you lose arguably your second best player on the team. Um, yeah, I, I just don't think the Knicks have enough firepower. I think I think they have more than enough firepower. I think Amari might be a blessing. The injury of Amari being out might be a blessing in disguise because now Carmelo doesn't have to worry about making Amari happy. He could do whatever he wants because Amari and Carmelo almost played this, as similar to each other. They always occupy the same type of spots in, on the court. So now uh, Carmelo has, is now the primary and the only primary option is scoring in the starting five. And Baron Davis is playing better. You still have J.R. Smith. You still have Steve Novak. You have Iman Shepard. You still have Jeremy Lin, who's still pretty, uh, still a good guard. And you have Tyson Chandler clog in the middle. So I think this team is going to make the playoffs. They are going to get the AC. They, they have two games. They're up. They're up on the on the Bucks by two games and a half. They own the tiebreaker. So I do see them making the playoffs in spite of not having Amari on the team. No, but, but see, all those players that you mentioned are precisely the reasons why I think the Knicks won't make the playoffs. It's because they've really had to juggle their rotations the entire season long. They have, they've had two coaches this season. <laughs> they brought in Tyson Chandler, who's a new center, right? Changes the whole philosophy of the team. And this was just earlier in the season, and now you have Baron Davis, a free agent signing that came in the middle of the season, now starting to get acclimated. You know, this team has had to juggle all these minutes, all these different players around. And they've had they've had no consistency up to this point, and it's hard for me to imagine that losing Amari Stoudemire gives them the consistency necessary to make the playoffs. Right well, now. Amari wasn't a, necessarily Amari for the whole season. I mean, he lost a step, and the Knicks, with all those changes you mentioned, their head is still above water. They're still in the eighth spot, just barely. But, but they're there, though. They're there. They're I think at five hundred, not twenty five, twenty five. So, I think it'll be good because now Carmelo could go off and play. He, he, Carmelo hasn't played good this whole season at all. He hasn't been the Carmelo that we're used to seeing. So maybe he, we'll start seeing that now where he, he has the whole court to himself without Amari being there. And it's not his it's not his team, and only his team now. So it'll be interesting to see them, see how they how they progress the rest of the season. Uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see who they who steps up in the absence of Amari Sotomayor. The yeah. Knicks are kind of short on big men right now. It's going to be interesting to see who comes in for Amari and whether that guy can, you know, put up the numbers necessary to fill that. that Landry Fields, if you start picking up, I will pick you up for my fantasy team. <laughs> well, only if you start picking it up. No, man. You don't <laughs> want anybody from the Knicks on your fantasy team because you can't depend on him, you know, after yeah, a week, we, all <laughs> week, right? It's somebody else coming in and taking their spot. So. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. But they they could start hitting that three consistently with J.R. Smith and with Steve Novak. I mean, that, that team's pretty loaded, so we'll see. You, uh, you don't think they could beat Chicago in the first round series? Though? No. No. <laughs> I, see, I don't, I don't, I think Milwaukee, you know. No. I, as, I know last, last week I really, you know, grilled the Bucks for having Monta Ellis and Marion Jennings on the same team, and I stand by that. But, you know, they give the Bucks the ability to score points. But they don't defend. And, but, you know, no, the Bucks. Yeah, know, but I'd rather take the Knicks with team. Carmelo and Jeremy Lin and Tyson over Brandon Jennings. Jeremy Lin only plays how many minutes now because of Mike Woodson? It's all right. He'll, he'll figure out a way. He's still productive. <laughs> Jeremy <laughs> Lin, is, the story's not over. Jeremy Lin is still alive, like, people. Lin Sanity is still alive. Story, that, that angle has long <laughs> since disappeared. No, we're going to bring it back. But the Bucks, you know, they have Gooden, who's having, you know, a, an emergence, a yeah. re-emergence. But can you count on them? I mean, I, he, he, ever since, even ever since Bogut went down, Gooden's been their best player before the trade deadline. So, yeah. you know, he's, his numbers are taking a hit now that Mon Ellis is on the team. But he's been their best player. Ilya Sova is a very good rebounder, something that makes him desperately need. <laughs> um, yeah, and and you have two guards that have the ability to score points and and you know put up numbers that can get the Bucks wins that they wouldn't normally be in. And the Knicks right now, I think, are going through their issues. And I'm not sure they can bring it on a night-to-night basis. Who, know, who knows? You know, this team, 
<laughs> was arguably, you know, one of the top teams in the Eastern Conference at the beginning of the season. People people thought that at least. And now, you know, look at how far they've fallen. I don't know. But I don't think that it gives me confidence that they'll make the playoffs is that they won a game where they shot, I think, 35% from the field, but they still managed to beat the Bucks. So that shows me they're showing some effort in playing defense. So I don't know. I think Carmelo will pick it up. And I just feel like the Knicks, through all this, will make the playoffs. And I don't think they make any noise. I think they had a shot and they were like the sixth seed or the fourth seed with Philly, with Philly now struggling. But if they don't get that, they won't. We we'll won and done. But it'll be interesting to see how they go, though. Fair enough. And lastly, another team that we've, we're going to talk about is the Los Angeles Clippers. <laughs> They've gone through their uh, the own Clippers. set of doldrums. And, you know, they're uh, how's that bandwagon you're feeling now, folks? Huh? <laughs> People are jumping off. <laughs> There's no more room in Lakerland. There's no more room in Lakerland for you guys. Stop it. They can't come back. Oh, they don't want to come to Lakerland. Yeah. Well, uh, at least we're making that. At least we're not going to fire our coach. Hopefully. Well, you 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 never know. You know. (laughs) Your bench Kobe again. (laughs) But yeah, so, you know, there are many fingers to point. Who who would you point the finger to? Uh, I point the finger at Don Negro and the fact that Chauncey got hurt. Uh, Those are two things. Because the team doesn't play defense. So I put them out the whole team, too. The team doesn't play defense at all. This the team could score at will. So I think what happened was that this team and its fan and its fans get it, or, and its fans <laughs> bought into it to the to their own hype of Chris Paul, Blake, and Lop City. And now where's the substance to that? Now I mean, you guys lost like twelve of the last nineteen games you guys played. You guys can't play defense. Can't you guys can't stop nobody. You guys don't have necessarily the third score. Um, Karan Bonner was supposed to be that th- that third score you guys are supposed to have, but he's not really there. Um, Blake needs to stop, needs to start hitting his free throws. Um, he needs to start hitting that 15 foot jump shot. I mean, now teams are just sagging off of him and and daring him to shoot. Uh, you know, there are a number of things that are wrong <laughs> with the Los Angeles Slippers. I don't even know where to start. Yeah. Del Negro, you know, is going to be on a wanted poster, dead or alive, at the end of the season because. I, I just don't think that this team has what, what it takes to, to win in a seven-game series. No. Every single matchup that, that, that the Clippers face, potentially, you know, it's hard. I think it's, it's very difficult to see them winning uh, yep. a series with the way that they're winning right now. Um, Blake Griffin, you, you mentioned, can't shoot a free throw, can't hit a jump shot either. <laughs> so he's going to have to develop that part of the game. And, you know, many people thought that it was going to be this year that Blake Griffin would finally add that dimension to his game, the jump shot. Yeah. It hasn't happened yet. And Chris Paul isn't necessarily the best shooter himself. You know, he, he slashes, don't get me wrong, but he's not a, a shooter. Yeah, but he can't do anything himself, though. He can't. Uh, Billups was supposed to, you know, be that guy, the guy that hits jump shots at critical moments of the game, and he's not there anymore. You bring in Nick Young <laughs> from the Washington <laughs> Wizards. Um, uh. Yeah, and, you know, his stories of jacking up shots is well documented. So, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what the Clippers do. Um... I don't know. I, I I don't have rosy predictions for this team right now. Yeah, I, just don't. I feel bad for Don Negro, though. He didn't ask for this. He asked for a team that wasn't supposed to be this good with this much expectation. So yeah. now you have to pay the price, Don Negro, for getting Chris Paul. They brought him in you as a coach it, to oversee a rebuilding project. That's what happens when you take away our point card from the Lakers. <laughs> do you, you still want Chris Paul? Are you still better about that? I don't know. I'm, I'm just saying I like sessions, but imagine Chris Paul on our team. Nah, whatever. Yeah. I got to get over it. Right. Sorry. I guess so. We've seen... Too many Lakers leave. I don't know. I don't think I could take Powell or find him out. No, we'll see. 